and Entitled Karen attacks me after I leave a negative review for her toy store, shoving me out the store and forcing both of us to call the police. And now I'm stuck unsure if I'm the jerk in this situation or if I should have done things differently. Here's what happened. The following story also came from the Am I the Jerk subreddit. Check the links in the description if you would like to submit your own story. So this happened about a week ago. My husband, who's a 27-year-old male, as well as myself, a 27-year-old female, recently moved across the country to this much quieter town and started looking for small businesses to go to. One day, we found what looked to be an interesting toy store. So while I watched our year-and-a-half-old son, my husband went to go check it out. When he got there, the lady running the store, who we later found out to be the owner, started acting rather odd towards my husband. She began acting suspicious of him and rather rude. All the while, he tried to just be nice, thinking the lady might cool down after a moment or two. But when she asked if he was looking for something, he said he was looking to price check and look around, maybe see if they had an item he was specifically looking for. He even mentioned a competitor in town and that he had price checked their prices earlier in the day. Somehow that seemed to set her off and she began going on about how they send people to spy on her, take pictures of her store, items and prices and that they are just greedy. In the next moment she suddenly turned on him, ranting and saying he was probably just another one of their spies, all coming in just to steal from her. At that moment he decided to just find something small and just leave, still trying to be pleasant, but also just wanting to get out of there. She then snapped at him, yelling at him to just go and leave, to just take the item and get out of there. He was so surprised and said he wanted to pay for it. And again, she snapped and told him to go. So he did just that. Not long after, he called me telling me what happened as he drove home. I was shocked and disgusted by the lady's behavior. So I went online to Google, Yelp, and her store's Facebook page, giving each an honest review of my husband's experience at her business. Not even 30 minutes later, she commented by saying, first of all, that is not at all what happened. I strongly urge you to discuss what really happened with your husband and enjoy the free gift I gave him. I would highly recommend rethinking your words on the reviews because this is now slander. But thanks for bashing a small business. I bet you feel like a keyboard hero now. I was surprised by this and I will admit I got really irritated, but thought that maybe there was some kind of miscommunication or misunderstanding of some sort, specifically between her and my husband. So I said to her, okay, then explain to me what happened, because he definitely talked to me about what happened. And honestly, this is where things begin to really pop off. She then completely ignored what I just said, and in another comment thread of my review, posted a picture of my husband from what I am guessing in her surveillance system and said with it, thank you so much for whatever you told your wife. I hope you really enjoy your free gift. And again, I got really irritated, but I I also noticed something in that moment. She wasn't saying what really happened. So I responded with, oh, so you're avoiding my question. What is your side of the story? What happened? Not long after that reply, my husband finally got home. I asked him for the toy and when he asked why, I said I'm going to return it and ask her what she thinks happened since she was giving me no straight answer online. Fast forward and when I got to her store, I was immediately met with hostility. She asked if I was such and such online and wanted to know my name. So I said, honestly, yes, that's me. She then asked for us to talk outside and I said, sure, go ahead. I did not speak to her with any form of aggression. I just wanted to return the toy and get clarification. However, I never got the chance to just talk with her and instead, when I went to put the toy on the register, she blocked my way. She yelled at me, I don't want you here. And immediately without any other warning or giving me a chance to respond, she physically shoved me towards the door. In shock of the moment and still just in the the mindset of wanting to be rid of this stupid toy, I threw it off to the side and into the store, and I saw it hit the floor just before having the door shut in my face. We both called the cops, and I sat in my car waiting for them while she hid in her locked store. We both talked to them separately, and I told them how she shoved me. She told them that I hit her with a toy first. In the end, I was given an 18-month trespassing citation for her claiming that I hit her with a toy, which honestly, the citation means nothing to me, as both my husband and I have no intention of ever returning, especially after the way she treated us. However, I feel the cops did this to make her happy as she seemed the most agitated and just to make sure that I wouldn't come in and contact her ever again, which I agreed with and I understood. They just wanted to make sure there was no further conflict and that this didn't escalate any further. The officers did say, however, that I shouldn't have made a personal situation public. I didn't argue, but I thought this was odd. I mean, I posted in her review section our experience at 
at her store. Isn't that what a review section is for? The next day, I noticed on both my Google review and my Facebook review that she stated, we believe the authorities handled this situation appropriately and it was much to our satisfaction. I ended up responding in kind by saying, I also agree the authorities handled it well. After all, we had no intentions of returning after how we were treated. Nor do we intend to after the 18 months are up. But after thinking on it for some time, I think the both of us got worked up over a misunderstanding, even though I don't know what set you off first at my husband. Now, I'm still willing to hear your side of the story, as that was half of my intention yesterday, alongside returning your toy. If you're willing to, you can direct message me and talk. If not, I understand. And this will be the last time you will hear from my husband and myself. I will also be keeping my one-star review up, as that is an honest experience of what happened at your store. Later on, I thought back on the events and I realized something. If I did supposedly hit her with a toy, why was no assault charge made? I feel it's because she didn't want to turn her surveillance recordings over, showing that she had laid her hands on me first. However, we do not plan to take her to court for assault either, because we feel it may be too much trouble and way too difficult to try and force her to release the footage. A few days later, we noticed her Facebook page had blocked me, and seeing through a friend's account, we saw that she had removed and hidden reviews from there. However, on all the reviews on other sites that I had put up, those negative reviews were still there. And lastly, we noticed that on her Google page, she had roughly seven negative reviews saying the same thing. So honestly, are we the jerks in this situation? What should we do? Honestly, I really wish you had your phone with you and you recorded that interaction going into that store. That's honestly the first thing I would have done that would have cleared up all of this. Because of course, she's not going to give over her footage. She's not going to say you assaulted her because that could very easily be proved otherwise by her footage. She literally didn't have a leg to stand on. Like seriously, this lady has some issues. She came at your husband and then you physically? Like good lord, that is not okay. So to answer your question, no, you are not the jerk here. This lady was totally out of line. Like she was not only paranoid from the get-go about your husband, but she was also hyper-aggressive literally because you were sharing the truth online and it made her look bad. And you know that got under her skin. You know for a fact that she absolutely hated that negative review. That probably hurt her way more than anything else you could have done. And you know what? You found other reviews that corroborated your evidence. So trust me, it's not just you. This lady has a problem and if anything, her business is probably going to shut down eventually. So nope, you are not the jerk. You didn't do anything wrong and this lady is absolutely insane and hopefully her business fails sooner than later. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you would like to submit your own story. Am I the Jerk for divorcing my cheating wife after she cheated on me with a co-worker? Here's what happened. Now, before we go any further, all names in this story are completely fake. Well, the title says it all. The moment I discovered my wife Sarah's infidelity is forever etched in my memory. It was a typical evening, and I had returned home from work due to feeling unwell. As I walked into our house, a sense of unease washed over me, prompting me to investigate what had been bothering me for weeks. My suspicion had been growing steadily, fueled by subtle changes in Sarah's behavior and the distant look in her eyes. Deep down, I knew something was amiss, but I wanted to trust her completely. However, on that fateful evening, my intuition got the better of me. I made my way to our study, where Sarah often spent time on her computer. As I approached, I noticed her quickly minimize a chat window on the screen. Alarm bells rang in my head as I realized that she was trying to hide something from me. The sense of betrayal intensified, and I mustered the courage to confront her about it. With trembling hands, I asked Sarah to show me what she had been hiding. At first, she hesitated and tried to deflect, but the desperation in my voice and the tears welling up in my eyes left her with no choice but to reveal the truth. She confessed to having an affair with her co-worker Steve for several months. The words hung heavily in the air, piercing through my heart like a dagger. The pain was excruciating, as if my entire world had crumbled in an instant. My mind raced with a whirlwind of emotions. Anger, sadness, and disbelief all vied for dominance. In that moment, the trust we had built over a decade of marriage shattered irreparably. The foundation upon which our relationship stood had crumbled, leaving behind nothing but a hollow shell of what once was. I knew then that I couldn't continue the marriage, not after such a profound betrayal. As the days passed, I sought solace and clarity by staying with my parents. The pain was unbearable, but it allowed me to reflect on the situation and consider my options. The more I pondered, the more convinced 
I became that divorce was the only path forward. The breach of trust was too deep, and I couldn't envision a future where I couldn't fully trust Sarah again. With a heavy heart, I made the agonizing decision to file for divorce. Sarah pleaded with me for another chance, promising change and expressing remorse for her actions. But deep down, I knew that rebuilding the trust that we once had was an impossible task. Throughout the divorce proceedings, Sarah's pleas continued, but my resolve remained unyielding. I wanted to break free from the pain and betrayal that had consumed our relationship. It was a painful and emotional journey, but I knew it was the right choice for my own well-being. Months later, the divorce was finalized. Sarah was left devastated, and I felt a mix of relief and sorrow. The weight of the past slowly lifted from my shoulders, allowing me to begin the process of healing and moving forward. In the midst of rebuilding my life, I cautiously opened myself up to the possibility of love once again. And it was during this time that I met Jenny, a remarkable woman who embodied the qualities I had longed for in a partner. Her kindness and honesty and unwavering loyalty helped restore my faith in love. Jenny became my rock, supporting me through the healing process and showing me that love could be pure and genuine. With her by my side, I rediscovered happiness and fulfillment. We forged a deep connection and a year later, we celebrated our marriage, grateful for the love and joy that we found in each other. As for Sarah, her whereabouts and actions became inconsequential to me. While rumors reached me that she had moved away, I made a conscious choice not to keep tabs on her. My focus shifted towards my own happiness, the well-being of my new family, and the pursuit of a life that is fulfilling. Reflecting on the situation, seeking revenge was initially a part of my emotional response. However, I came to realize that revenge would not bring me true happiness or closure. Divorcing Sarah, on the other hand, allowed me to break free from the pain and betrayal, paving the way for a brighter future. Today, I am finally content with my life. Jenny's love and the family we've created bring me immeasurable joy. I am grateful for the strength I found within myself and for the blessings that have come my way. While the past held moments of intense pain, it has shaped me into a resilient individual who values trust, loyalty, and personal happiness above all else. Wow, this story had a great ending at the end of the day. Obviously, you're not the jerk for divorcing your wife or cheating on you. If I was in your shoes and I experienced something like that, I think I would also be devastated and really want to get away from her. I mean, you saw right away that this is just not going to work. There's no way you can even begin to try and repair this, and it was better to get out of that relationship while you could and move on to somebody who really would love you. Because what Sarah did to you was unacceptable. She cheated on you behind your back with a co-worker, and now she's probably wondering, well, was it worth it? And I can guarantee you that the answer is a resounding no. So good for you for moving on and finding a better life, because Sarah betrayed your trust. And from the sounds of it, it looks like your new wife is going to treat you a lot better than Sarah ever could. My boyfriend is giving me the silent treatment all because he's embarrassed of his actions. And honestly, at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. My boyfriend and I have been together for two years, and we just moved in together a few months ago. I'll preface this by saying that we went to a football game earlier, and he had quite a bit to drink. He stopped when we got home so he could sober up. That way we could go see his friends tonight. But he still seemed a bit tipsy when this whole thing went down. About an hour ago, we were getting ready to go see his friends. He was in the bathroom and all of a sudden I hear him freak out. Apparently our dog had gone pee on the floor in the bathroom. About a half hour prior to this, she had been staring at us in a needy sort of way, which he does literally 24-7, making it hard to decipher what she needs, if anything. So I thought that maybe she needed to go potty, but he didn't think so because she had just gotten back from the dog park about an hour before this. He started yelling at her in a lighthearted way, but I told him to stop because she was trying to tell us she needed to go to the bathroom and neither of us took her out. It was our fault that she had an accident. She's the sweetest, most well-behaved dog. I said that she can't tell whether or not he's playfully yelling at her. All she hears is him raising his voice at her, which clearly scared her because she ran out of the bathroom with her tail tucked between her legs and she was shaking at that. He stopped yelling at her, went downstairs to grab our food delivery. Then when he came back upstairs, he came over to where me and the dog were. I was sitting at the dining room table and she was sitting underneath me. He again playfully raised his hand like he was about to hit her and she was cowering underneath me. I became livid. I yelled at him, what are you doing? He laughed and said he was just kidding as if our dog was supposed to know he wasn't actually going to hit her. He has a dark sense of humor, especially when he drinks, but this was absolutely unacceptable. It left a horrible taste in my mouth. After this, we didn't say anything to each other. I ate my dinner at the kitchen counter while he ate behind me at the dining table. He was eating spaghetti and was very loudly slurping his noodles. He's eaten spaghetti in front of me many times, 
and he's never done that. So I figured that he was just trying to further irritate me. At first I let it slide, but after the fifth time, I peered back at him and I said, do you seriously have the audacity to slurp your noodles? He sarcastically looks at me and says, wow, sorry. I continued eating and a couple minutes later, he started loudly belching, all while I was still clearly eating. I looked at him again and he was like, geez, sorry, I can't do anything right. Look, I'm not offended by burping normally, but slurping your food and burping while someone is eating in front of you is so grating and entirely bad manner to me. Then he passive aggressively started talking to our dog, saying something like, should we just stay home tonight? And then went and changed into his pajamas and proceeded to not talk to me after that. After we finished eating, he stomped off to the bedroom and slammed the door. I immediately followed him in and asked what his problem was. He didn't respond for a while and then he said, I don't like the way you talk to me. You seem annoyed. I said I was annoyed at the time, but I wanted to move on so we don't ruin our weekend yet again. This is the third time he's chosen to silently pout and stomp around like a child, mind you. You know, rather than communicate. And this is what he does in an argument ever since we moved in together. I am beyond fed up with it. The last time was three or four weeks ago, and the silent treatment lasted for four full days. I just stood in the doorway waiting for a response, and he kept ignoring me and watching TV. Occasionally, he would shoot me a dirty look and snap and say, what do you want me to say? I said, if this relationship is going to continue, we need to start communicating about issues as soon as they arise, not ignore each other for days on end. He said, I'm embarrassed and I don't want to talk to you, and then motioned for me to get out. So I shut the door, and I've been sitting in the living room ever since then. He's come out three times to get something from the kitchen and just keeps shooting me dirty looks and not talking to me. As I said, this is a routine thing that happens during arguments, and I'm beyond fed up. I feel like I'm dating a child, not a grown man who's turning 30 next month. What should I do or say to him? I'm so annoyed that this is happening again, especially when I'm about to leave and spend the night at my parents. I don't even know if this relationship is worth salvaging. What should I do? Honestly, your boyfriend is being incredibly immature. Giving someone the silent treatment and refusing to talk to them all because of something that you did and the stupid stuff you decided to pull off is honestly so toxic. There's no reason to act like that. Like, seriously, that's inappropriate. You literally just said, hey, stop burping and belching and don't pretend like you're going to hit the dog. And by the way, what he did to that dog was awful. The original poster's right. I don't think that dogs can really understand the nuance of any kind of sarcasm or stuff like that. So if you raise your voice at them, they probably think, oh yeah, you really are mad at me. Or if you fuss at them or make them feel bad, they're going to feel that and they're going to think you're upset. So I don't blame the original poster for being like, stop it. What are you doing? Let's also remember that this guy's almost 30 years old and his way of dealing with problems is to give the silent treatment. That is so immature, it's not even funny. So honestly, if you want any kind of positive change, it's definitely going to have to start with him. He needs to learn how to communicate better, or at least just own up to his mistakes. Because the way he's doing it right now is honestly so toxic, and you do not deserve that in the slightest. Am I the jerk for fainting at my aunt's wedding, and practically ruining it all in one go? Here's what happened. So I'm a 21 year old female, and I attended my aunt's wedding a few weeks ago. I was not part of the wedding. I was just a guest, which I was fine with. Before the wedding, everyone was advised to drink lots of water and eat something beforehand because it was going to be extremely hot that day. The wedding started at 5 o'clock p.m. and I had absolutely nothing to eat or drink up until then except maybe a granola bar because I was extremely busy that day. So when it was time for the wedding, I was already tired and hungry. About 30 minutes into the wedding, which was a church too, by the way, I was feeling uneasy and lightheaded, so I excused myself to go to the washroom. As I was walking, I got the feeling like I was about to collapse. The next thing I can remember was coming to and seeing lots of people surrounding me, including the bride and groom. Apparently when I fainted, I fell onto the photographer who was crouched down near me. Not only that, but he dropped the camera lens and broke it. To be honest, I don't even remember seeing the photographer, but I may have been too dizzy or something like that to even see him in the first place. Now the wedding was a bit of a cheaper one, so the photographer was a family friend of the groom's who only had one camera with him. The bride was just in tears that she won't have any good pictures from her wedding. The photographer insisted that he could drive home and grab a different one, but it would unfortunately take too long to do that. The bride was indeed mad at me, but I feel like it was a bit harsh as it was extremely embarrassing for me already. Fainting never even crossed my mind as something that would happen at all. Now they did get pictures, but unfortunately it was on their cell phones. So am I the jerk for fainting at this wedding and practically ruining it? What should I do? So honestly, I can kind of see both sides of this. Obviously,
obviously you didn't mean to faint. I mean, that wasn't really in your control. I mean, nobody shows up to a wedding and is like, hey, I'm definitely going to faint right about now. But you yourself did say that, hey, I didn't eat or drink all day, even though you knew it was going to be hot. That part is absolutely on you. Nobody could have predicted that you were going to pass out. Nobody could have planned for that. And honestly, it really was kind of a freak accident. But I think this could have been avoided if you just drank some water and ate some food. You should not have ignored that advice. Like, clearly, the worst thing happened to you specifically. You fainted at the wedding, and now they're never going to have really good pictures of their wedding. And that's not fair. That literally is not fair in the slightest. Now, don't get me wrong. You didn't do this intentionally. And of course, that photographer is really cheap for only bringing one lens with them. But overall, you probably should have planned this better. And you should have been more attentive to the advice that you were given. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, check out Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked in the description.